Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the seventh president of the United States, the good and the bad. Hi everyone. Welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade, and today we're going to try something new. This is what I like to call pancake history. I have this nice little machine here. It's going to print out a picture of what I'm talking about. So let's get started. Today, like I said, we're talking about Andrew Jackson, who became our seventh president, but his life is so much more than just president. See, he was born to Irish immigrants in the Carolinas, and although it's disputed where he's from, North and South both claim him. That's not really what's important. You see, at a young age, during the Revolution, he learned a contempt for the British when he was captured by Bannister Carleton and struck in the face with a sword. You can see where that leads. But he grows up. He survives. His mother dies. His brothers die. But he survives, moves to Tennessee, becomes a lawyer. He rises to prominence, even though it's the frontier, it's the wild west of the day, but he rises to prominence as a lawyer. Well. When the War of 1812 breaks out, his love for the British is not to be found. And although he's tasked with using his militia and the army to fight Indians, he does become the hero of New Orleans. And even though the war was technically over, he didn't know. Fast forward, President Monroe's having problems with the Seminole Indians raiding Georgia farms from Florida. So he goes to Jackson, who's now a major general, and he says, listen, go down to the border, stop the raids, but don't invade Florida. What does Jackson do? He invades Florida. Well, Jackson just incites so much anger in Spain. He captures forts. He actually executes two British nationals. And he really should have gotten in trouble, but he didn't. Monroe said, you know what? Let's take Florida. Well, he's offered, he offers Jackson the governorship, and Jackson steps down after two months because he wants to run for president. Well, we know he didn't win the election of 1824. Although he did have the majority of the popular vote, he didn't have the majority of the electoral vote. The vote goes to the House of Representatives, and Henry Clay, who finished in fourth, uses his power to get them to vote for John Quincy Adams, who conveniently, one hand washes the other, gives Henry Clay the job of Secretary of State, which is the stepping stone to the presidency at the time. Jackson's upset by this corrupt bargain, but vows to come back in 1828, and he does. And he wins with John C. Calhoun as his vice president. Well, pretty quickly, they come to odds with each other over the tariff of 1828. Well... Nullification is threatened. Jackson threatens force with the force bill, and eventually they agree on a compromise by Clay to lower the tariff gradually. The Union was saved, even though South Carolina threatened to secede, and we're talking 30 years before the Civil War. This is nothing new, right? Another issue Jackson had was the Bank of the U.S. He thought it was a monopoly, so he said, let's kill it. It's held by private hands, not my hands. It needs to go away. The problem is, once he put out of the control back in the state's hands, the nation went into a depression. Of course, it happened during his new VP, Martin Van Buren's presidency, but Jackson really deserves the credit for that. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is his treatment of the Native Americans. You know, when he said the white man deserved the land, he meant it. And he didn't matter what cost he had to pay, and that included kicking the Cherokee off their land. In fact, the Cherokee even sued the state of Georgia, saying they had no right to kick them off their land because of treaties that had been signed in the past. And John Marshall, the um, Chief Justice of the United States, agreed with him. And Jackson's famous quote is, Marshall has made his decision, let him enforce it. Unfortunately, that led to the forced march of the Cherokee, where 25% of their population died on their march to Oklahoma. So, you see, not everything was good with Jackson. He's remembered for his battlefield tactics, but unfortunately, we gotta remember the negatives as well. So let's take a look at the picture that we painted. You ready? And there we have it. Hopefully you can see it. I'll zoom in for you. There's Andrew Jackson. You have his hair, his shirt, there's his face. It's not the best picture, but we have a pancake in the likeness of our seventh president. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit subscribe. You know, let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future pancakes, leave it in the comments. For Virtual History 360, I'm Mr. Wade. Thank you.